Maha Sudasana Sutta, translated by Rupert Gethin. First section for recitation. This is what I have heard. Once the Blessed One was staying at Kusinara, in the Upavatana Sal Grove of the Malas, between the two Sal trees at the time of his final Nibbana. Now the Venerable Ananda approached the Blessed One, and having approached he saluted the Blessed One respectfully, and sat down to one side. Once seated, he said to the Blessed One, Sir, the Blessed One should not enter final Nibbana in this mud-walled town, this remote provincial town. Sir, there are other important cities such as Kampar, Rajagaha, Sarvati, Sarkita, Kosambi and Benares. The Blessed One should enter final Nibbana in one of these. In these cities there are many wealthy nobles, Brahmins and householders who have great faith in the Tathagata and who will pay due honour to the remains of the Tathagata. Ananda, do not say that this is a mud-walled town, a remote provincial town. Long ago there was a king called Mahasudasana. He was an anointed prince, a sovereign of the four quarters who maintained the stability of the country. This town of Kusinara was the royal city of King Mahasudasana and was called Kusavati. Twelve leagues in length on the east and west sides and seven leagues across on the north and south sides, the royal city of Kusavati was successful and prosperous, with many inhabitants, full of people and well provided with food. Just as Alakamanda, the royal city of the gods, is successful and prosperous, with many inhabitants, full of divine beings and well provided with food. Day and night the royal city of Kusavati was filled with the ten sounds, the sound of elephants, horses, carriages, kettle drums, tabors, vinas, singing, cymbals, gongs, and lastly the sound of the cries of Eat, Drink, and Be Merry. The city was encircled by seven walls, one of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, one of crystal, one of ruby, one of emerald, and one of all kinds of gems and it had gates of four colours, one of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, one of crystal. At each gate seven pillows were set into the ground, three times the height of a man in circumference, and in height four times that of a man. One pillar was of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, one of crystal, one of ruby, one of emerald, one of all kinds of gems. The royal city of Kusavati was encircled by seven rows of palm trees, one of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, one of crystal, one of ruby, one of emerald, one of all kinds of gems. The trunks of the gold palm trees were gold, the leaves and fruits silver. The trunks of the silver palm trees were silver, the leaves and fruits gold. The trunks of the beryl palm trees were beryl, the leaves and fruits crystal. The trunks of the crystal palm trees were crystal, the leaves and fruits beryl. The trunks of the ruby palm trees were ruby, the leaves and fruits emerald. The trunks of the emerald palm trees were emerald, the leaves and fruits ruby. The trunks of the palm trees of all kinds of gems were of all kinds of gems the leaves and fruits of all kinds of gems. And the sound of those trees when stirred by the wind was lovely, delightful, charming, enchanting, like the sound of the five kinds of musical instrument when well played by musicians skilled in the arts of musicianship. And at that time those in the royal city of Kusavati who were revellers, fond of drink, keen drinkers, danced round to the sound of the trees stirred by the wind. Now, Ananda, King Mahasudasana possessed seven treasures, 
and was especially fortunate in four ways. What were the seven treasures? On the full moon observance day on the fifteenth of the month, when King Mahasudasana had bathed his head and gone up onto the roof of his fine palace to keep the observance day, there appeared to him the heavenly wheel treasure, complete with a thousand spokes, rim and hub. When he saw this, the king thought, I have heard that when a king, an anointed prince, who has bathed his head, goes up onto the roof of his fine palace on the observance day, on the fifteenth to keep the observance day, and there appears to him the heavenly wheel treasure complete with a thousand spokes, and furnished with a rim and hub, then that king is a wheel-turning king. Would that I were indeed a wheel-turning king! Then Ananda, King Mahasudasana, got up from his seat, and having arranged his robe over one shoulder, took a golden vessel in his left hand, and sprinkled the wheel treasure with his right. May the wheel treasure roll on. May the wheel treasure be victorious. Then the wheel treasure rolled forward to the east, with King Mahasudasana and his fourfold army following behind. And in whatever country the wheel treasure came to rest, there King Mahasudasana took up residence with his fourfold army. And all the rival princes in the east approached King Mahasudasana and said, Come, your majesty, you are welcome. It is yours, your majesty. Instruct us. King Mahasudasana said, Do not kill living beings. Do not take what is not given. Do not indulge in sexual misconduct. Do not tell lies. Do not drink intoxicants. Govern as you have governed. And so the rival princes in the east became obedient to King Mahasadasana. Then Ananda, the wheel treasure, plunged down into the eastern ocean, rose out again, and rolled on to the south. Then it plunged down into the southern ocean, rose out again, and rolled on to the west. Then it plunged down into the western ocean, rose out again, and rolled on to the north with King Mahasudasana and his fourfold army following behind. And in whatever country the wheel treasure came to rest, there King Mahasudasana took up residence with his fourfold army. And all the rival princes in the north approached King Mahasudasana and said, Come, your majesty, you are welcome. It is yours, your majesty. Instruct us. King Mahasudasana said, Do not kill living beings. Do not take what is not given. Do not indulge in sexual misconduct. Do not tell lies. Do not drink intoxicants. Govern as you have governed. And so the rival princes in the north became obedient to King Mahasudasana. And when Ananda, the wheel treasure, had conquered the entire earth to the edge of the ocean, it returned to the royal city of Kusavati, and stopped as if fixed to an axle in front of the court, at the entrance to King Mahasudasana's inner apartments, which it adorned. Such was the wheel treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the elephant treasure, all white, firm in seven ways, with magic powers, flying through the air, a king of elephants, called changes of the moon. And when the king saw him, his heart was inspired with confidence. What an excellent mount! If only he would submit to control. And then, just like a fine, thoroughbred elephant that had been well trained for a long time, that elephant treasure submitted to control. And long ago, in order to test the elephant treasure, King Mahasadasana mounted him in the early dawn, and travelled across the land to the edge of the ocean, returning to the royal city of Kusavati to take his breakfast. Such was the elephant treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next, Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the horse treasure, all white, with a black head and fine mane, with magic powers flying through the air, a king of horses called Thundercloud. 
and when the king saw him, his heart was inspired with confidence. What an excellent mount! If only he would submit to control. And then, just like a fine thoroughbred horse that has been well trained for a long time, that horse treasure submitted to control. And long ago, in order to test the horse treasure, King Mahasudasana mounted him in the early dawn, and travelled across the land to the edge of the ocean, returning to the royal city of Kusavati to take his breakfast. Such was the horse treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the gem treasure. This was a beautiful beryl, pure, expertly cut with eight facets, bright, clear, without flaw, perfect in every respect. Its brilliance spread out for a league round about. And long ago, in order to test the gem treasure, King Mahasudasana summoned his fourfold army and, fixing the gem on the top of his standard, went out in the dark of the night. And because of the gem's brilliance, the villagers from round about thought it was day and started their work. Such was the gem treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the woman treasure. Beautiful, of wonderful looks and graceful, she had the most lovely appearance. She was neither too tall nor too short, neither too fat nor too thin, neither too dark nor too fair. She had a beauty which was more than human, like that of a goddess. And the touch of the woman treasure's body was just like cotton or cotton wool. In the cool season her limbs felt warm, in the hot season cool. From her body wafted the scent of sandalwood, and from her mouth the scent of lotus. She got up before the king and went to bed after him. She waited for his instructions, was pleasing in her conduct and gracious in her speech. And the woman treasure was not even unfaithful to the king in thought, let alone in deed. Such was the woman treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next, Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the steward treasure. As a result of his past actions, he possessed a godlike vision with which he could see hidden treasure, whether belonging to people or not. And he approached King Mahasudasana and said to him, You need have no worries, Lord. I will manage your wealth properly. And long ago, in order to test the steward treasure, King Mahasudasana boarded a boat and went out into the current in the middle of the river Ganges. And then he said to the steward treasure, Steward, I need gold coins. Then let the boat go to one bank. But, steward, it is right here that I need gold coins. Then the steward reached down into the water with both hands and drew out a pot full of gold coins. Is that enough, your majesty? Have I done what you wished? he asked. That is enough, steward. You have done what I wished. You have served me as I wished, said the king. Such was the steward treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. Next, Ananda, there appeared to King Mahasudasana the advisor treasure, a learned, clever and wise man who knew when to advise the king to advance, when to advise him to retreat, and when to advise him to stand still. And he approached King Mahasudasana and said to him, You need have no worries, Lord. I will advise you. Such was the advisor treasure that appeared to King Mahasudasana. These, then, were the seven treasures possessed by King Mahasudasana. Furthermore, Ananda, King Mahasudasana was blessed with good fortune in four ways. Handsome, of wonderful looks and graceful, the king had the most lovely appearance, surpassing that of other men. This was the first way in which he was blessed with good fortune. Again, he was long-lived, living longer than other men. This was the second way in which he was blessed with good fortune. Again, he was of good health, suffering little pain with good, balanced digestion, 
without excessive heat or cold, surpassing that of other men. This was the third way in which he was blessed with good fortune. Again, he was loved and cherished by Brahmins and householders, just as a father is loved and cherished by his sons. And Brahmins and householders were loved and cherished by the king, just as sons are loved and cherished by a father. Long ago, Ananda, King Mahasudasana went out into the park with his fourfold army, and the Brahmins and householders came up to him and said, Go slowly, Lord, so that we can look at you for longer. And the king, too, said to his charioteer, Drive slowly so that I can look at the Brahmins and householders for longer. This was the fourth way in which King Mahasudasana was blessed with good fortune. So King Mahasudasana was blessed with good fortune in these four ways. Now, King Mahasudasana thought, Why don't I have lotus ponds built in the spaces between these palms, at every hundred bows' length? So he had lotus ponds built in the spaces between those palms, at every hundred bows' length. The lotus ponds were lined with tiles of four colours. Some were of gold, some were of silver, some were of beryl, and some were of crystal. And each lotus pond had four flights of steps, one of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, and one of crystal. The gold flights of steps had gold balustrades, with silver crossbars and handrails. The silver flights of steps had silver balustrades with gold crossbars and handrail. The beryl flights of steps had beryl balustrades with crystal crossbars and handrail. The crystal flights of steps had crystal balustrades with beryl crossbars and handrail. The lotus ponds were surrounded by two railings, one of gold and one of silver. The gold railing had gold posts with silver crossbars and handrail. The silver railing had silver posts with gold crossbars and handrail. Now, King Mahasadasana thought, Why don't I have different kinds of water lilies and lotuses for all seasons planted in these lotus ponds? Blue lotuses, red lotuses and white lotuses, so that everyone can have garlands. So the king had lotuses for all seasons planted in those lotus ponds, blue lotuses, red lotuses and white lotuses, so that everyone could have garlands. Then the king thought, Why don't I have bath attendants placed at the edge of these lotus ponds who can bathe people that come? So the king had bath attendants placed at the edge of the lotus ponds who could bathe people that came. Then the king thought, why don't I arrange for the giving out of different things at the edge of these lotus ponds? Food for those who need food, drink for those who need drink, clothing for those who need clothing, transport for those who need transport, beds for those who need beds, wives for those who need wives, money and gold for those who need money and gold. So the king arranged for the giving out of different things at the edge of the lotus ponds. Food for those who needed food, drink for those who needed drink, clothing for those who needed clothing, transport for those who needed transport, beds for those who needed beds, wives for those who needed wives, money and gold for those who needed money and gold. Then the Brahmins and householders came to the king with a great sum of money and said, Lord, we have brought this great sum of money for your use. Please accept it. Good sirs, enough. I have a great deal of money collected through proper taxation. You should keep this and take away some more. When they were refused by the king, they withdrew to one side and considered together. It is not right for us to take this money back to our homes again. Why don't we have a house built for King Mahasudasana? So they approached the king and said, Lord, we will have a house built for you. And by his silence the king agreed. Then Nananda, Saka, lord of the gods, knowing in his mind King Mahasadasana's thoughts, 
spoke to the god Visakamma. Come now, friend Visakamma. You must build a house for King Mahasiddhasana, a palace called Truth. Such good fortune for you, replied Visakamma to Sakka. And then, just as a strong man might straighten his bent arm, or bend his straightened arm, he disappeared from the realm of the thirty-three gods, and appeared before King Mahasiddhasana. Then he said to the king, Lord, I shall build a house for you, a palace called Truth. And by his silence the king agreed. So the god Visakamma built a house for King Mahasiddhasana, a palace called Truth. The palace of Truth was one league in length on the east and west sides, and half a league across on the north and south sides. The ground floor of the palace was faced to a height three times that of a man, with tiles of four colours. Some were of gold, some were of silver, some were of beryl, and some were of crystal. It had eighty-four thousand columns of four colours, some of gold, some of silver, some of beryl, and some of crystal. It was covered with boards of four colours, some of gold, some of silver, some of beryl, and some of crystal. It had twenty-four staircases of four colours, some of gold, some of silver, some of beryl, and some of crystal. The gold staircases had gold balustrades with silver crossbars and handrail. The silver staircases had silver balustrades with gold crossbars and handrail. The beryl staircases had beryl balustrades with crystal crossbars and handrail. The crystal staircases had crystal balustrades with beryl crossbars and handrail. There were 84,000 chambers of four colours in the palace. Some were of gold, some were of silver, some were of beryl, and some were of crystal. The golden chambers were furnished with silver couches, the silver chambers with golden couches. The beryl chambers were furnished with ivory couches, the crystal chambers with ebony couches. And at the doors to the golden chambers there stood silver palms with trunks of silver and leaves and fruits of gold. At the doors to the silver chambers there stood golden palms with trunks of gold and leaves and fruits of silver. At the doors to the beryl chambers there stood crystal palms with trunks of crystal and leaves and fruits of beryl. At the doors to the crystal chambers there stood beryl palms with trunks of beryl and leaves and fruits of crystal. Then King Mahasadasana thought, Why don't I have a grove of completely golden palm trees made at the door to the room of the great array, so that I can sit and spend the day there? So the king had a grove of completely golden palm trees made at the door to the room of the great array, so that he could sit and spend the day there. The Palace of Truth was encircled by two railings, one of gold and one of silver. The gold railing had gold posts with silver crossbars and handrail. The silver railing had silver posts with gold crossbars and handrail. It was also hung right round with two strings of bells, one of gold and one of silver. The gold string had silver bells, the silver string had gold bells, and the sound of those strings of bells when stirred by the wind was lovely, delightful, charming, enchanting. Like the sound of the five kinds of musical instrument when well played by musicians skilled in the arts of musicianship. And at that time, those in the royal city of Kusavati who were revellers, fond of drink, keen drinkers, danced round to the sound of the strings of bells stirred by the wind. Ananda, when the Palace of Truth was finished, it was hard to look at, dazzling one's eyes. Just as in the last month of the rainy season, at the beginning of autumn, the sun, rising above the morning mist into a clear and cloudless sky, is hard to look at, and dazzles one's eyes. Then King Mahasadasana thought, Why don't I have a lotus pond called Truth built in front of the Palace of Truth? 
So the king had a lotus pond called Truth, built in front of the Palace of Truth. The lotus pond of Truth was one league in length on the east and west sides, and half a league across on the north and south. It was lined with tiles of four colours. Some were of gold, some were of silver, some were of beryl, and some were of crystal. It had twenty-four flights of steps, some of gold, some of silver, some of beryl, and some of crystal. The gold flights of steps had gold balustrades with silver crossbars and handrail. The silver flights of steps had silver balustrades with gold crossbars and handrail. The beryl flights of steps had beryl balustrades with crystal crossbars and handrail. The crystal flights of steps had crystal balustrades with beryl crossbars and handrail. The lotus pond of truth was encircled by two railings, one of gold and one of silver. The gold railing had gold posts with silver crossbars and handrail. The silver railing had silver posts with gold crossbars and handrail. The lotus pond of truth was encircled by seven rows of palm trees, one of gold, one of silver, one of beryl, one of crystal, one of ruby, one of emerald, one of all kinds of gems. The trunks of the gold palm trees were gold, the leaves and fruits silver. The trunks of the silver palm trees were silver, the leaves and fruits gold. The trunks of the beryl palm trees were beryl, the leaves and fruits crystal. The trunks of the crystal palm trees were crystal, the leaves and fruits beryl. The trunks of the ruby palm trees were ruby, the leaves and fruits emerald. The trunks of the emerald palm trees were emerald, the leaves and fruits ruby. The trunks of the palm trees of all kinds of gems were of all kinds of gems the leaves and fruits of all kinds of gems. And the sound of those trees when stirred by the wind was lovely, delightful, charming, enchanting, like the sound of the five kinds of musical instrument when well played by musicians skilled in the arts of musicianship. And at that time, those in the royal city of Kusavati, who were revellers, fond of drink, keen drinkers, danced round to the sound of the trees stirred by the wind. Ananda, when the palace and lotus pond of truth were finished, King Mahasadasana provided those of the ascetics and Brahmins of that time who were well known with all that they wanted, and then went up into the palace of truth. Second section for recitation. Then Ananda, King Mahasudasana thought, It is as a fruit and result of what kind of action that I now have such great fortune and power. Then he thought, It is as a fruit and result of three kinds of action, namely giving, control and restraint, that I now have such great fortune and power. Then the king approached the room of the great array, and standing at the door he breathed a sigh. Stop here, thoughts of sensual desire. Stop here, thoughts of hostility. Stop here, thoughts of malice. This is far enough, thoughts of sensual desire. This is far enough, thoughts of hostility. This is far enough, thoughts of malice. Then King Mahasadasana went into the room of the great array and sat down on the golden couch. Secluded from sense desires and unwholesome qualities, he attained and remained in the joy and happiness of the first absorption, which is accompanied by thinking and examining and born of seclusion. By stilling thinking and examining, he attained and remained in the joy and happiness of second absorption, a state of inner clarity and mental unification that is without thinking and examining, and is born of concentration. And then, by having no desire for joy, he remained equanimous, mindful, and fully aware. He experienced the bodily happiness of which the noble ones speak, saying, Equanimous and mindful, one lives happily. 
and so he attained and remained in the third absorption, by letting go of happiness and unhappiness, as a result of the early disappearance of pleasure and pain, he attained and remained in the pure equanimity and mindfulness of the fourth absorption, which is free of happiness and unhappiness. Then King Mahasiddhasana came out of the room of the great array and went into a golden chamber. And seated on a silver couch, he stayed, pervading the first quarter with a mind full of friendliness, likewise the second, third, and fourth quarters. In the same way he stayed completely pervading the whole world, above, below, around, everywhere, with a mind full of friendliness, a mind abundant, great, measureless, free from hostility, free from affliction. He stayed pervading the first quarter with a mind full of compassion, with a mind full of sympathetic joy, with a mind full of equanimity, likewise the second, third, and fourth quarters. In the same way he stayed completely pervading the whole world, above, below, around, everywhere, with a mind full of equanimity, a mind abundant, great, measureless, free from hostility, free from affliction. Ananda, King Mahasudasana had 84,000 cities, the chief of which was the royal city of Kusavati. He had 84,000 palaces, the chief of which was the Palace of Truth. He had 84,000 chambers, the chief of which was the Room of the Great Array. He had 84,000 couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony, spread with blankets and cloths, with antelope covers, canopies and red pillows at each end. He had 84,000 elephants decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which was the king of elephants, changes of the moon. He had 84,000 horses decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which was the king of horses, Thundercloud. He had 84,000 chariots with coverings of lion skin, tiger skin, leopard skin and pale cloth, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread. The chief of these was the chariot Flag of Victory. He had 84,000 gems, the chief of which was the gem treasure. He had 84,000 wives, the chief of whom was Queen Subhata. He had 84,000 stewards, the chief of whom was the steward treasure. He had 84,000 loyal princes, the chief of whom was the advisor treasure. He had 84,000 cows with jute tethers and bronze milking pails. He had 84,000 myriads of garments of the finest linen, cotton, silk and wool. He had 84,000 plates for the serving of rice every evening and morning. Now at that time, Ananda, the 84,000 elephants used to come to be of service to the king every evening and morning. And the king thought, These 84,000 elephants come to be of service to me every morning and evening, but what if they should come in two groups of 42,000, one every hundred years? So the king addressed the advisor treasure. These 84,000 elephants come to be of service to me every morning and evening. But friend, let them come in two groups of 42,000, one every hundred years. Yes, Lord, replied the advisor treasure to the king. And from that time they came in two groups of 42,000 elephants, one every hundred years. Now after many hundreds, many hundreds of thousands of years, Queen Subhata thought, I have not seen King Mahasudasana for a long time. What if I should go and see him? So she addressed the court women, Come, wash your hair and put on new clothes. We have not seen the king for a long time, so let's go and see him. Yes, lady, they replied to the queen. And when they had washed their hair and put on new clothes, they went to the queen. 
and she addressed the advisor treasure. Friend advisor treasure, get ready the fourfold army. We have not seen the king for a long time, so we shall go and see him. Yes, lady, replied the advisor treasure. And when he had got ready the fourfold army, he announced to the queen, The fourfold army is ready for you, lady. Now it is time for you to do as you think fit. So Queen Subhatar, accompanied by the fourfold army, went with the women of the court to the Palace of Truth. And there she went up into the palace to the room of the great array, where she stood leaning by the door. And the king thought, What is that noise, like a great crowd of people? And coming out he saw Queen Subhatar leading by the door. When he saw her he said, Stay right there, lady, do not come in. Then he addressed one of his men, Come, sir, bring out the golden couch from the room of the great array, and make it ready in the grove of completely golden palms. Yes, lord, replied the man to the king. And he brought out the golden couch from the room of the great array, and made it ready in the grove of completely golden palms. Then the king lay down on his right side like a lion, with one foot resting on the other, mindful and fully aware. Then Queen Subhatar thought, How serene King Mahasiddhasana's senses are! How pure and clear the colour of his skin! Surely it can't be that the king is dying. Then she said to the king, Lord, you have eighty-four thousand cities, the chief of which is the royal city of Kusavati. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand palaces, the chief of which is the palace of truth. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand chambers, the chief of which is the room of the great array. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony, spread with blankets and cloths, with antelope covers, canopies and red pillows at each end. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand elephants decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of elephants, changes of the moon. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand horses decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of horses, Thundercloud. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand chariots with coverings of lion skin, tiger skin, leopard skin and pale cloth, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the chariot, flag of victory. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand gems, the chief of which is the gem treasure. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand wives, the chief of whom is the woman treasure. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand stewards, the chief of whom is the steward treasure. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand loyal princes, the chief of whom is the advisor treasure. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand cows with jute tethers and bronze milking pails. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand myriads of garments of the finest linen, cotton, silk and wool. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. You have eighty-four thousand plates for the serving of rice every evening and morning. Arouse your desire for them. Awaken your longing for life. 
At these words, King Mahasadasana said to Queen Subhadra, Lady, for a long time you have spoken to me with words that are welcome, dear and agreeable. But now in these last hours you speak to me with words that are not welcome, not dear, disagreeable. Then how should I speak to you, Lord? Lady, speak to me like this. We must lose and be deprived of everything pleasant and dear. Lord, you should not die with longing. Unhappy and dishonourable is the death of one who dies with longing. Lord, you have 84,000 cities, the chief of which is the royal city of Kusavati. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 palaces, the chief of which is the palace of truth. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 chambers, the chief of which is the room of the great array. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony spread with blankets and cloths, with antelope covers, canopies and red pillows at each end. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 elephants, decorated with gold, with golden banners, and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of elephants, changes of the moon. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 horses, decorated with gold, with golden banners, and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of horses, thundercloud. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 chariots with coverings of lion skin, tiger skin, leopard skin and pale cloth decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the chariot flag of victory. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 gems, the chief of which is the gem treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 wives, the chief of whom is Queen Subhata. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 stewards, the chief of whom is the steward treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 loyal princes, the chief of whom is the advisor treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 cows with jute tethers and bronze milking pails. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 myriads of garments of the finest linen, cotton, silk, and wool. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 plates for the serving of rice every evening and morning. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. At these words, Queen Subhata wept and shed tears. Then wiping away her tears, she spoke to King Mahasadasana. We must lose and be deprived of everything pleasant and dear. Lord, you should not die with longing. Unhappy and dishonourable is the death of one who dies with longing. Lord, you have 84,000 cities, the chief of which is the royal city of Kusavati. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 palaces, the chief of which is the Palace of Truth. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 chambers, the chief of which is the Room of the Great Array. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony, spread with blankets and cloths, with antelope covers, canopies, 
and red pillows at each end. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 elephants decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of elephants, changes of the moon. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 horses decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which is the king of horses, Thundercloud. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 chariots with coverings of lion skin, tiger skin, leopard skin and pale cloth, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread the chief of which is the chariot, flag of victory. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 gems, the chief of which is the gem treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 wives, the chief of whom is the woman treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 stewards, the chief of whom is the steward treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 loyal princes, the chief of whom is the advisor treasure. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 cows with jute tethers and bronze milking pails. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 myriads of garments of the finest linen, cotton, silk and wool. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. You have 84,000 plates for the serving of rice every evening and morning. Let go of your desire for them. Do not long after life. Not long after, Ananda. King Mahasadasana died, and the feeling he had when he died was just like the contentment a householder or a householder's son feels when he has eaten a wonderful meal. When he died he was reborn in a happy place, the Brahma world. For 84,000 years King Mahasadasana enjoyed the carefree life of a young prince. For 84,000 years he was viceroy. For 84,000 years he ruled the kingdom. For 84,000 years he followed the spiritual life as a householder in the Palace of Truth. Having cultivated the four sublime ways of living, at the breaking up of the body after death, he was born in the Brahma world. Now, you might think, Ananda, that at that time King Mahasadasana was someone else, but you should not look at it in that way, Ananda. I was King Mahasadasana at that time. Those 84,000 cities, the chief of which was the royal city of Kusavati, were mine. Those 84,000 palaces, the chief of which was the Palace of Truth, were mine. Those 84,000 chambers, the chief of which was the Room of the Great Array, were mine. Those 84,000 couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony, spread with blankets and cloths, with antelope covers, canopies and red pillows at each end, were mine. Those 84,000 elephants, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which was the king of elephants, changes of the moon, were mine. Those 84,000 horses, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which was the king of horses, Thundercloud, were mine. Those 84,000 chariots with coverings of lion skin, tiger skin, leopard skin and pale cloth, decorated with gold, with golden banners and with drapes embroidered with golden thread, the chief of which was the chariot, Flag of Victory, were mine. Those 84,000 gems, the chief of which was the gem treasure, were mine. Those 84,000 wives, the chief of whom was Queen Subhata, 
were mine. Those eighty-four thousand stewards, the chief of whom was the steward treasurer, were mine. Those eighty-four thousand loyal princes, the chief of whom was the adviser treasurer, were mine. Those eighty-four thousand cows with jute tethers and bronze milking pails were mine. Those eighty-four thousand myriads of garments of the finest linen, cotton, silk, and wool were mine. Those eighty-four thousand plates for the serving of rice every evening and morning were mine. Of those eighty-four thousand cities, I lived in just one at that time, namely the royal city of Kusavati. Of those eighty-four thousand palaces, I lived in just one at that time, namely the Palace of Truth. Of those eighty-four thousand chambers, I lived in just one at that time, namely the Room of the Great Array. Of those eighty-four thousand couches of gold, silver, ivory and ebony, I used just one at that time, namely one of gold, silver, ivory, or ebony. Of those eighty-four thousand elephants, I rode just one at that time, namely the king of elephants, changes of the moon. Of those eighty-four thousand horses, I rode just one at that time, namely the king of horses, thundercloud. Of those eighty-four thousand chariots, I rode in just one at that time, namely the chariot, flag of victory. Of those eighty-four thousand wives, just one wife used to attend on me at that time, namely a woman of the ruler class, or a Velar Mikani. Of those eighty-four thousand myriads of garments, I wore just one set of garments at that time, namely one made of the finest linen, cotton, silk, or wool. Of those eighty-four thousand plates, I ate at most a portion of rice with a suitable amount of curry from just one plate. See, Ananda, how all those conditioned things have gone, ceased, changed. Conditioned things are like that, Ananda. They are impermanent, not lasting, unreliable. Therefore one should be disenchanted with all conditioned things. One should have no desire for them, one should be free of them. I recall laying aside the body in this place six times when living as a wheel-turning king, a righteous king of truth, sovereign of the four quarters, maintaining the stability of the country, possessing the seven treasures. This is the seventh laying aside of the body. But I do not see any place in this world with its gods, its Mara and Brahma, in this generation with its ascetics and Brahmins, its princes and peoples, where the Tathagata might lay aside an eighth body. This is what the Blessed One said. And when the Happy One had said this, the teacher spoke again. Impermanent are conditioned things. It is their nature to arise and fall. Having arisen, they cease. Their stilling is happy.